bro. Oh, is this another goddamn spiritual map? Maybe. Hey, man. Oh, or is this talking about the guitar? You're usually more upbeat. Hey. You really want me to drag you down to FBI? That is the you most uh, coherent up. movie that Bruce LaBruce well, has made uh, I've today. I've lost something, man. My most precious treasure in the whole world. Well, my most precious after my family. My guitar, man. It's gone. That's what I Lily call my said she gave it away. Gave it away. Can you believe that? Some she jackass called your tidying up the story. <laughs> I don't get her, man. What kind of logic is that? I didn't tidy up the storeroom, so I have to lose my guitar. I'm with you Keith on that. Yeah. Right, FBI? Man to Could have paid someone like coming from. sixty bucks to tidy up the storeroom. Oh, uh, my meeting with that fine guitar is what led hundreds. me onto the path of rock, man. It was back in high school. I made my oh, first sorry. visit to Seattle. The world was tired of pop music. Seattle. Mm -hmm. Nothing good is in Seattle. It was only a few years before grunge would explode out of Seattle. I met a true rocker there, man. Like a pop he had sunglasses, assist. a biker jacket, and the long hair. Man, he even had a bandana. I, I mean, sunglasses he was and long the hair. times by then, but nevertheless, the pure white guitar on his back hypnotized <laughs> all who passed him. In the midst of a little Larry and Race going there. Huh? I glimpsed a tradition that had to continue. That's right. It's called Rockabilly. You dig me, right, man? The I dig the old Rockabilly from time to time. On new things, That's more a I York help myself. trend. I approached him and opened my mouth. I told him what I was feeling, FBI. <laughs> then I put right his dick right in it. I don't remember the words I used now. It was, it was like a your, dream. Your approximation of his accent is a little bit liver <laughs> me. I can tell you that. Our shared love of music. Sparked something oh, inside, though. I think like you're on the right track. Friends. Before I knew it, I'd been hanging out with this guy for three days. When I finally had then to Then he go rose home, from the tomb. <laughs> what do you know? He gave me that guitar, man. He said that the soul of rock should be passed on to the next generation. That is how the so it's an intergenerational thing, huh? It was like a flash came costume. Into my hands. Well, thanks for listening anyway, FBI. It means a lot I to didn't me. have a choice. It was a cutscene. The bond between men. Yeah, Number 17. Guitar. We are tying up some loose ends here. Yep. Quietly returning. Never mind the zombie brains on it. Hey! Whoa. <laughs> hey! Here, have some cheese. Where the hell were you hiding hey! that, man? Where did you Do you remember how he described it? the guitar yeah, earlier in the story? As no. a reward for cleaning up Pure the white. Uh, oh, right, that's true. I see. Yeah. This well, is not I, a pure um, white guitar. Well, he painted I'm happy it, to see it with you. Painted it's it with the blood of that guy when he died. I'll, uh, I'll just do that the manly thing and uh, forget about it. Come on now, Keith. I can't play it myself. Instruments exist to be played, not to become an ornament. Or a what weapon. What am I going to do with it? Use it as a weapon? That's yeah. not what it's for. You're the owner of this guitar. <laughs> you should have it. <laughs> Your story relit the burnt-out fire of rock in my soul. FBI that's right, you are so story right. with that. Hey, just hold oh, on Oh, that's a Keith in the poster on the left, isn't Take it? Take this, then, in oh, exchange. Yeah. yeah, that'll do you some good at this point of the game. <laughs> it's oh, a we gold can get card. cheese so our cheap super now? Discount card. There's no markup on anything we sell you if you use this. Uh, this, in a way, means I'd work for no pay for you, man. Are you sure? Of course, we're buddies, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, speaking of Aryan undertones, in Gossip Girl, and, and in life, uh, but in Gossip Girl in a recent episode that I was watching, they had a white party, and I always feel like, aren't, isn't that weird? Like, don't people find that weird? Like, and it's like, oh no, we just all, we just wear all white. And I'm like, it still sounds a little Nazi fundraiser to me, you know? Yeah, um, and I think some people have the sort of sheltered life where it does the question doesn't come up when they hear it. So, like, there, there's no part of their mind that says, maybe that's not a good idea, or maybe we could call it something else. Yeah. There's a, um, a meme going around that looks like it's not going to last very long of taking pictures of white things on white backgrounds, which is kind of silly, but it's called the white on white, 
Okay. I'm like, uh, first time I heard about it before I saw what it was about. Uh, I, I don't, that sounds, this, this, there what are about ways white, that could go. What about white on white violence? Guess. I know. When will our community leaders speak up about white on white violence? That's what I want to know. Is this guy still got to give us a clue? What did he say? You want info fucked off? Pretty much. What are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. <sighs> Spit on the car. I'm just gonna get some gas, I guess. Oh, I guess he tried to talk to him instead of buying from him. Yeah. Now run him down. Run him down! He has stupid hair. He deserves to die. One red arrow and one gold arrow. Why? Well, I, I see three gold arrows. Oh, I'm looking at the screen, not the map. Oh, there's one we just passed by, but... Yep. Okay. I'm sure Dean Meister has a plan. Let's go find Sigourney and run over her. <laughs> <laughs> so we should do just run over Sigourney and run over anybody else who just annoys the shit out of us. Um... I can't remember if I said it out loud on one of the recordings or not, but I was looking up the actors, and uh, the same person who say, plays Sigourney played Olivia, so I think that voice actor is pretty awesome. Yes. Often people faking old voices sound like people faking old voices. Yeah, I, I don't think Sigourney, she went for an old voice, she just went for a Mary Gross voice. An interesting voice. Yeah. Oh, there's where the bird carving is. So we just had to go to places where we had seen Harry and Michael, I guess? I guess. So you find that so strange. The Geekmeister cuts out the saving, but not the load screens or anything else. Yeah. Of course, I guess yeah. anyone who's watching this closely will have noticed... Uh... That's not smiling. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, I ate some food poisoning. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the hell I was saying. Hey, I'm working. Uh, you're talking about Geekmeister cutting out the save times and not the load screen? Oh, yeah. I, I, if anybody's been watching super closely, you might have noticed that I made small edits myself here and there. Uh, that's because I probably would have been making bigger edits, but uh, because of the injury, uh, it's, it was very difficult to edit those first week or so. Um, now I can sit up for about an hour at a time. So. I even went and saw a movie. Then. What'd you see? Belko Experiment. How was that? Um, it is by far my least favorite James Gunn written movie. I've seen so far, um, and that includes Scooby-Doo. Uh, so, um, oh, wow. Uh, Some of the visuals it, looked interesting, but I, I hadn't delved very deep. That's not to say it's a bad movie. Um, I, I enjoyed Scooby-Doo, uh, and um, uh, and I enjoyed this. It's just, I guess, my thing is like with James Gunn. Generally, anything that I watch of his, it makes me think. I mean, in Scooby-Doo, it's like one line or whatever here and there but um but still i remembered feeling like oh i get it and i really would have liked to see the original script that he wrote for scooby-doo I, I don't know if you know the story behind that I don't no know viewers do uh gun was hired because of his background in trauma and stuff like that uh to write a scooby-doo script that was kind of uh both heartwarming but also kind of a strong pg-13 like the drug jokes and things like that were meant to be much more uh, prevalent and, and much more in the open. Um, like, Sarah Michelle Gellar says that the whole reason she took the job is because she laughed out loud at one of her lines, which was, Fred, your ascot makes you look gay. Mm -hmm. And of course that didn't make it into the final movie because 
Uh, essentially, they bought guns first draft. Then we're like, what the hell are we thinking? We can't do this with Scooby-Doo. And they said, look, we liked your script enough. Can you go through it and uh, child-proof it, basically? And so, um, you know, a couple of the jokes stayed in, like Shaggy saying, Mary Jane, that's like my favorite name, and yeah. little things like that, you know? Um, uh, but so there are some yeah. of those little hints that I really enjoy, I think. Um and I, know, I never did see the second one, but um, but in any case, Belko Experiment was just basically, uh, oh god, what are we, what are we doing here? Hey, uh, gonna, is Asha going to teach us how to play chess? Asha want, wants him to play chess, but uh, Zach doesn't know how to play. York does. Uh, and he sells goods. Uh, hey, All right. Um. Oh, okay. So it's not like that's actually a quest to learn chess. It's just yeah, just a little color. All right. Uh, fair enough. Um, Belko experiment I enjoyed, but it just didn't. Like there was nothing in it that surprised me or made me think. Um, it was just kind of like. Hey, here's what the movie's about, and that's exactly what the movie's about. Right. I mean, like I thought, I thought Tony Goldwyn was amazing. I don't know if I've ever seen him any, anything before, but I was shocked that I hadn't heard of him before because uh, he really blew me away. But, but yeah, it's just kind of it does what it says on the tin, you know. Yeah, there, there's some value to that, too. Yeah, and, and again, like I say, uh, you know, 88 minutes long, I had a good hour and a half. I, I enjoyed it. I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. It's just, it's like, I don't think I'll ever want to watch it again, and it didn't make me think at all, so... So I was shocked by that. But, right. uh, but as far as being enjoyable and being something that doesn't just you know i mean it's it's not going to see beauty and the beast yeah so that's value yeah so i guess uh the the lefou gay scene is not as bad as we had feared but the movie overall is pretty bland and boring and and so it ultimately doesn't matter is the impression i'm getting from others Right. I think that's pretty much the case with most Hollywood blockbusters. It just ultimately doesn't matter. Well, I mean, in this particular issue, uh, representation can matter. Um, if it's... If it's representation that people remember, if it's an interesting and good character, good as in well designed, not not necessarily a good versus bad, um, that kind of improves things for for others who are looking for representation. It it, it, it tends to enrich the movie, it tends to not always, um, and it tends to make it easier for someone coming along with a story with that particular group in it to to get their work created um, but bland inoffensive stuff meh Whoa. meh no, no yeah. harm real good really yeah which is honestly probably the best possible outcome yeah I've been chided for taking a negative view toward toward that that movie or the, the possibility of, of LeFou uh, being a bad representation. Uh, but, you know what? We don't have a good history with with uh, that sort of thing with this company, so I, I'm, I'm willing to be pessimistic over it. Ha <laughs> happy to be wrong. It turns out to be right in the middle, so, you know, that's kind of how life usually works out. I, uh... Oh my god! I just think it looks dull as all hell. Yes, and, and that that's exactly what it is from what I'm hearing. 
The most interesting thing is that a background character hugs someone. Oh my god. <laughs> Not gonna get that in Oliver Stone. Now that the murders are solved, we don't feel the need to fuck with you to get to our main room. <laughs> right. We say solved, but officially from the FBI uh, and or police blotter, um, I, I don't know what, what they're going to report. I guess just the case and George and Thomas were, were in on it, but we won't go into too much detail as to how. Sure. Stop it, whatever you're doing. <laughs> what is he doing? Uh, I guess he just has to put the bird carving back here? It's a cracker. He's just... Apparently... Oh, he's gotta wait until Michael isn't around Harry. I think. Oh, maybe. Oh, his hand's bandaged, too. Well. Just such a better model. I have a f even though it's only small differences. I have a feeling when you have a cut across the eye, it doesn't turn orange. I I, I don't think that's how it works. But I, I could be wrong. I've seen that done in fiction though before, so I wonder if it can happen. I see white more often. I mean. It makes more sense to remove color than to change color. Yeah. Okay. You know. But I, it, the, the cut is either shallow enough to not do anything except put a car, scar across your cornea, or deep enough to puncture the eyeball. I can't imagine how color change would even happen, except in the the sort of notionally blind eyes are white. Uh, it's not true. Not always true. But uh, I assume that's where it started, and then people started putting in other colors just because. It's not how wheelchairs work. What? <laughs> you guys dancing over there? Jesus, just put him to bed, Michael. Come on. Just shove him down the stairs. <laughs> Make it look like an accident. Why does he have to come into this room? This is Michael's room? It's weird. I mean, he, it's weird he can't seem to smoke in the, in the main room. I think it's like, if I just come in here, yeah. then I don't have to worry about the AI anymore. Yeah, maybe. Mr. Francis Zach Morgan, this is... I'm sorry, Michael. I just had to read your diary. How very impolite. I'm a douche. I'm so shocked. I'll stop rhyming for now. <laughs> Where did you find this? In the diner, Michael. You were only able to look for it at night, right? Diner, of course. It must have meant a lot to you. His um, but why does pocket it have handkerchief no is a little excessive. Mr. Francis <laughs> Zach Morgan, Mr. Stewart gave me this carving the day he adopted me. Dun, dun, dun. It was an unfinished carving made by Mr. Stewart himself. When he gave it to me, he said, When you is that grow a name up tag? to be a fine man, as a son, I can be proud of. Weird. I'll give you I think the it's a handkerchief. To this bird. Well, it's and excessive you regardless. the carving yourself. I'm far from receiving the eye parts if I'm losing the bird itself, and I'm far from being I'm a son. A, I'm a bad Stewart. boy. Will you spank me? Michael! Mr. Stewart! <laughs> I've been eavesdropping. None of us have any respect for your, your privacy. <laughs> Let me. I thought that was Kit speaking there for a second. These are the eyes for the bird. Nope. Have you forgotten my promise? What a fine son you turned out to be. But I... You've been a good boy. Good, good boy. It's okay, Will you spank me? Objects are not important. It's your heart that's important. That's what I wanted to teach you. And you've learned it well. I'm proud of you. Why is that weird, Thanks like, grating noise after I assume it's Harry's breathing apparatus. You and I need to be now, they know about York. Steer this town in the right direction. Oh, Harry knows everything. That's not how wheelchairs work. Yeah. <laughs> he 
He's rich enough. He's probably got a wheelchair that turns on a dime. Special gyroscopic. Uh... <laughs> Amazing. He knew exactly what was going on all along. That's because he. Mr. Francis Zach Whoa. Morgan, you've been. <laughs> I'm dead now. To help me, and I appreciate it very much. Here. But now I have to return to the spirit Ew. realm. No problem. Look after your father, okay? I think it'd be funny if every time he completed a quest, the quest giver uh, became a ghost. <laughs> never explain it. Never comment on it. <laughs> oh, I'm alive again. Thanks for resurrecting me. I was cursed to die until I could give away this card. Oddly specific and kind of a uh, aleatory curse, but whatever. Aleatory? Yeah, it's uh, not really the right word there, but I couldn't think of a better one. Aleatory means, like, determined by chance, ah. pretty much. A die roll is aleatory. Arbitrary? Sure. Yeah, that might be. Well, that might have been the word I was looking for. Simplify, simplify. There's some no good Nick's Edwards. <laughs> now I can't for the life of me remember the difference between tautological and teleological. Tautological is a statement that it's where you crash into the you crash into the ending in the supposition, right? Um, yes. Um, the tree is yeah. green because green is the tree. T to use a hmm. clum yeah. clumsy example. Right, right. You found new cards? Show them to The me. ends justify the means as far as the logic goes. Sixty-four cards. That's a full set. I I'm never gonna have to kill you. To be able to see a full set of these Does he cards? already have the extra card from the previous play? Me. Here's a little something. I guess promised. so. Light sword. Not a lightsaber, because that's <laughs> that a trademark light name. It was a top secret weapon developed by the U.S. Army. Just read Which, the of course, the original name for lightsabers were laser sword. Hold on to it, okay? This voice actor is the same actor who does the gem. Really? Yeah. And thank you for showing me the full set. Thank you for making me learn how to love and laugh again. Now that there's almost nothing to fight. Yeah. What are you doing? Just showing us that everything's complete, I think. Hmm. I don't know, did going through that list give us money? Talking to him did. Said if you see me in a city somewhere, say hi. So I'm assuming... Whatever plans for a sequel they had, Wesley was going to play a part in it. Sounds like. 